Hello, I'm Shadow Duke, and welcome to my Sins of the Father quest guide. To start this quest, you will need these following skill requirements and quest requirements to begin. Just note that magic is the only skill that is boostable in this quest. Here are the item requirements for the quest. A lot of this stuff can be obtained during the quest, but I'd recommend just having it so that you're more prepared. The only things that might be a little bit difficult for you to get are the Virewatch outfit and the Ivan's flail, but I'll explain how to get that later on, so no worries if you don't have it right now. And here are the recommended items for the quest. As you can see here, most of these are just teleports so that you have an easier time moving around for the quest. And now that we got that all out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into this quest. This map will show you a few ways to get to sleep. So choose which one is easier for you. To begin this quest, make sure you have at least these items in your inventory. Once you're in sleep, talk to Valitz Hertz to start the quest. Then choose option 1. Now speak to the Jester Hameln inside of the church right next to you. Make sure that you have at least one empty inventory spot before you do this. Choose option 1 again. And option 1 one last time. Now go to the pub to the east and talk to the bartender, Carl. Choose option 2. When you finish speaking with Carl, go south of the pub and search the barrel. For this part of the quest, you'll need to sneak around. Make sure you stay close enough to Carl to keep track of him, but keep enough distance so he doesn't catch you. When the cutscene finishes, start following Carl. Make sure you hide behind corners so he can't see you when he does turn around. He will itch his head and stop moving before he does. As you can see in the video, there are plenty of things to hide behind, so just take it slow and you shouldn't get caught. Once you reach the end of this path, be prepared to fight. A monster will appear that you have to kill. Once you reach a graveyard, a cutscene should appear, exposing his source. As you can see in the video, this is a very easy fight. Just take in consideration I am max combat level. For lower levels, make sure that you pray magic and dodge his poison throw attacks if you're using melee. If you're using range, you could just stand behind one of the tables and cast from far away. Now that you've defeated him, destroy both of the lab tables. When both tables are destroyed, go back to the surface. Go to the Sleep Church Graveyard and speak to Valif Hertz. Choose option 2 when it comes up. Now you must go to the Patrodamus Temple where Drizzle is located and talk to Valif Hertz there. Some of the ways you can get here is by using a Slayer Ring, the Fairy Rings with code CKS, or the Canfis Home Teleport located in your house. When prompted, choose option 2. Now exit the temple, head east to Frankenstein's castle 
and then south to talk to Ivan Storm. Or you can just use the home teleport and then use your canvas portal like I did here. Now talk to Ivan. He'll request that you bring him to Berg de Rot through the Temple Trekking minigame. Now go back to the Petrodamas Temple so that you can start a temple trek to bring Ivan to Berg de Rot. At this point make sure that you have an Ivan's flail with you so you can do damage to vampires. Once you reach the temple, talk to Ivan and choose option 1 to begin the trek. In temple trekking you're going to want to make sure that Ivan stays alive and you can do so by killing the monsters that are attacking him as well as feeding him if necessary. For the first part of the trek, use your knife on the tree to cut vines from it. You'll need three of them. Once you have all three vines, put them together to create a rope, use the rope on the tree, and swing across. Then continue the trek. Next you'll be facing nail beasts. Use your normal weapon to attack them, and use food on Ivan if his health gets low so he doesn't die. Now you will come across a broken bridge. Chop down trees and then use the logs on the bridge to fix it. If you don't have an axe, kill the zombie for one. Make sure the axe is equipped or else this won't work. Now with your Ivan's flail equipped, kill the vampires. If you attack the easternmost vampire first, he won't attack Ivan and you won't need to worry about him dying. If you didn't do that like I did in the video, then just make sure you use food on him when his health gets low. Once both vampires are defeated, you would have completed the temple trekking. Now head south to talk to Ivan at the boathouse. When you finish speaking to them, board the boat and go to Isin Graveyard. When you reach the island, you will be confronted by a few people. Speak with them and watch the cutscene. When the cutscene finishes, click on the mausoleum to the north to open a puzzle. To solve this puzzle, the numbers in the rows need to equal the sum of the number on the right, and the numbers in the columns need to equal the sum of the number on the bottom. This puzzle can be solved with a little bit of trial and error as well as a little bit of brute force. So what I would recommend is start by filling out each row first and then start solving the columns and figuring out which ones work and which ones don't. Now in the video I don't follow my own advice because at the time I did not know how to solve this puzzle. It was uh, new to me. Now even though it was new to me, it did take me about three minutes to solve it, so with enough basic math and some brute forcing, you can definitely get this done pretty quickly. So now that you've finished the puzzle, you'll notice that a cutscene starts. Once you finish the cutscene, you're going to need to talk to all the Myrarchy. Start by talking to Ivan, then Vertida, then Kale, Radagad, Paul Meef, and finally talk to Valise Hertz again. Everyone can be found on this island. Before you proceed to the next part, check your quest guide to make sure that they've registered everyone you talk to. 
You'll know that you've talked to everyone because the screen will go black for just a second. Now head to Meyer Deach using the Draken's Medallion or the boat to your west. Once you get off the boat, head through the obstacle course to get to the city. When you reach Meyer Ditch, speak to one of the vampires and ask to be sent to the mines using option 1. Now that you're in the mine, mine 15 ore and put it in the cart. If you forgot your pickaxe, just talk to one of the miners and he'll give you a bronze one. Once you've mined 15 ore and put it in the cart, speak to one of the vampires in the mine and he'll send you out of there. Now that you're out of the mine, head southeast to the house with the slash tapestry and the statue. Climb through the tapestry and head down the stairs. Be aware you will need to fight a mutated bloodveld in this stage. Now speak to Saflan and choose option 1. Just use regular weapons to kill this Bloodveld. Finish the conversation with Cephalon and then go to the northwest and search the bookshelf to find a book. Once you have the book, talk to Cephalon one more time and choose option 1. Now head back to Bergnerat using Mortania Legs 3 or Morton Teleport. At this point, go into the bank in Bergnerat to get the next set of items that you need for the quest. If you don't have the Virewatch outfit, make sure you bring 1,950 coins so that you can buy it once you reach the city. Now that you have your items, go back to the boat and go to the icy graveyard. Once you're there, talk to Valif on the eastern part of the graveyard. Now use the Draken's Medallion to teleport to Ver Sinhaza or use the boat to get to Meyerdich. The house to the south is Trader Seven's house where you can buy the Virewatch outfit and the house to the north is Old Man Ral's house where you continue the quest if you already have the outfit. Make sure you buy a top, bottom, and boots of the outfit. Once you have the outfit, go to the north and go down the ladder. Now speak with Pol Mafi and choose option 1 when available. He transforms the Virewatch outfit into a noble outfit. Now exit the hideout and return to the boat and head back to the Icene grave. Talk to Vanescula Draken. Once you finish speaking with her, take the boat to go to sleep. Head north to the graveyard and talk to Valif Hertz. This is the same location where you started the quest. When you're ready, choose option 1 and prepare for a fight. As with the first fight, all items are lost on death. Make sure you're using Advent's Flail, protect from magic, use anti-poisons when you need to, and stomp out the magical fires when they spawn. As long as you're keeping up with the anti-fires, as long as you're keeping up with the fires on the floor and drinking an anti-poison, this shouldn't be a hard fight. Once he's defeated, you'll get blood on your clothes and then talk to Valif. Now teleport back to Bergnerat using Morton Legs 3 or Shades of Morton minigame teleport. Now you should be at Bergnerat. Go to the bank and grab these items before you continue. Once you have all these items, head back to the Icene Graveyard using the boat in Bergnerat. Speak to Vanescula Draken again. Now equip your Vire Noble clothing and use the Draken Medallion to teleport to Var Sinhaz. 
Talk to the fire watch right next to the bank and ask to be sent to the mines. In the video, I leave the city and do that, but it's not necessary. It'll be much faster if you talk to the one next to the bank. Since you're wearing the noble outfit, just talk to a fire watch and you'll be directly escorted out of the mines. To the north, you'll see a crack in the wall. Use that to enter the city. Now head to the Arboretum and speak to guard Desmidius Lazarius. You can trigger the dialogue just by clicking on the door. When you finish speaking with him, head back to the crack in the wall where you entered the city. Speak with Mordan Nakazi in the southeast corner. Now head to the prison located north of the Arboretum. Talk to Maria Gatterinks in the prison. Keep speaking with her until a cutscene starts. Head back to the Arboretum and enter it. Search all the shelves until you find old notes. Once you get the note, read it and figure out how many gallons you need to cut the tree. It should be listed on the third line to the bottom. Once you know how many gallons you need, use this chart to figure out which valves you should turn. Once you have the proper amount of gallons going to the tree, start cutting it until you get eight blistering wood logs. If you have no inventory space like I did in the quest, you can go outside and talk to the banker to deposit your items. Be aware you do need to talk to the banker on the right. Now that you have the blistering logs, go to the icy grave using the Draken's medallion and then running southwest, or teleport to Shades of Morton and then run to Berg de Rot to use the boat. Once you're there, speak to Valif or Valescula. Once you're done speaking with her, head back to Old Man Ral's house in Meyer Ditch by using the Draken's medallion or the boat. Now speak to Vertida to give her the logs by choosing option 1 when it comes up. If you don't have your flail, you can buy another one from him for 20k. 
Once you give them the logs, search the crates to the north to get a blessed silver sickle. Once you have the sickle, use the ruby on it and then use the level 3 enchant on it. Then use the blister wood log on the enchanted ruby sickle and lastly use Ivan's flail on the blister wood sickle. Now that you have the ultimate weapon of mass destruction, head back to Bergderot Bank to prepare for the final battle. These are all the items that you need for the final battle. For the ranged weapon, anything will do. Don't worry about whether it can deal high damage or not. Just make sure it's fast. Here is an example of your final setup. Feel free to swap out any upgrades or downgrades that you might have. If you die in the boss fight, just talk to Valif Hertz and give him 50k to retrieve your items. If you die again before retrieving your items, all items will be lost. Now that you have your setup, go back to the icy graveyard using the boat. Then talk to Valif Hertz once you're there. So let's go over the details of the final battle since the next conversation will start it. For the final battle, Van Storm has three special attacks. The first special attack is my pet will feast on your corpse. For this attack, he will spawn a blood veld that will explode on you for high damage if you don't kill it in time. Switch to your range weapon to kill him before he reaches you. When he says stare into darkness, make sure you run away from Van Storm to avoid high damage. His last attack is Blood Will Be My Strength. This will spawn a blood orb that heals Vanstrom. If it reaches you, you will take high damage, but you can also lure it to him so that he takes damage instead. Once his hit points reaches zero, you will start the second phase. He will no longer use the special attacks from the first phase. Instead, he will summon lightning that will strike tiles around you. You'll notice that they'll get darker before they strike so that you can avoid them. Other than that, just DPS him until he dies. It's a pretty straightforward fight. After the next conversation to initiate the fight, I'll be showing how the battle goes on my end so that you can take a look. To start the fight, in the icy graveyard, run northeast and talk to Saflon Hollow and then choose option 1 when it appears. When you tell them that you're ready, a cutscene will appear, leading to the final battle. Here are some examples of things not to do during the fight. Here for some reason I decided to run into the orb. Don't know why, it just happened. Second mistake was I was trying to use mage to attack the blood veld and I just didn't click it in time. And it did cost me my life. And as I said before, just talk to Valitz Hertz with 50k to reclaim your items before you try to fight him again. And finally, here's the full fight in case anyone wants a visual example of how to do it. In this fight, I am still using mage, but just use your range weapon instead.
Once you defeat him, just watch the final cutscene. And once the cutscene finishes, congratulations, you just completed the quest. The main notable rewards of this quest is going to be access to Darkmire, the three tomes of 15,000 experience that you get, the Darkmire teleport using the Draken's medallion, and you can use the boat to go to Berg de Rot, Sleep, or Icy Graveyard. And there we have it. If this was helpful in any way, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see any more. Thank you for joining me. Bye.